uh, so am I talking to you about Christmas presents or are, or are you just leaving this video playing around somewhere? Maybe on a loop, maybe somewhere near a very nice friend, relative or partner. I'm not judging. Look, for you or them, here are five recommendations for apps that they or you they can buy you or you can buy for yourself. Yeah. It's a little tricky, isn't it, to wrap an app in present. So one of you get you this. These are five, five special, particularly special apps for writers. Hello, I'm William Gallagher, and this is 58 Keys, which, as ever, as always, is for writers, writers like you and me, who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads, and whatever you write on them, we write on them in apps. And in this, sorry, in this instant, it just occurs to me, this is a top five, there could be a sixth, there could be a sixth Christmas gift. You could become a 58 Keys Patreon member. I do actually, I do really like the group we've got and of course it'd be a treat to have you join me on patreon but i mean it's a treat having you right there right now and you aren't right there right now solely to put off writing for a little bit you want the list come on so all right straight up first up this i love this i love all of them ish on the outline hey, don't skip on if you hate outlining i'm not a fan I mean, I, I will outline an article often enough if I'm researching it, but really what I'm doing is I'm just kind of gathering all the bits of information together and then I'm juggling it about later. Uh, Omni Outline is for gathering and juggling. Uh, two, for example, uh, here's the 58 Keys schedule for the next few weeks. Don't peek ahead, uh, but all planned out in Omni Outline, which lets me do these sort of things. Uh, look, I could talk a lot about this app. In fact, actually, I have. Um, I've talked about Omni Outline many times, but this time, Omni Outliner is also the reason for this whole list. The others on it are excellent, of course, or I wouldn't bother telling you about them. But right now, Omni Outliner version 5 is out and Omni Outliner 6 is coming. Now, as I record this, I don't know when it will be out. I, there is even a chance, there's a little chance that it could be available by right now, by the time you see this. I don't know. But what I do know, because I asked the developer, I specifically asked them about this and they told me, um, this has been recorded kind of mid to late November 2025. If you buy Omni Outliner 5 from this time, the time I'm recording, um, until whenever Omni Outliner 6 comes out, you will get Omni Outliner version 6 for free. And I asked about this because I figured it was pretty likely because um, I told you I don't like outlining. Okay, years ago, many, many years ago, I became a bit obsessed with OmniFocus, the to-do app from the same company, still am. And I was so obsessed so quickly that I thought, well, let's see what else the company does. And as part of fiddling around one afternoon, I downloaded Omni Outliner version two, I think it was, maybe maybe three. And I figured, ah, I've got 30 days to play with it. I'll use it three. By the end of the first day, sod the first trial, I just bought the app outright but never opened it again because the very next day the very next version of omni outliner came out and recent buyers got it for free and people who bought earlier they actually still get a discount so pricing omni group omni group good on pricing yeah um except i don't want to discuss pricing with you today because i don't actually know what the new version 6 is going to cost whenever it does come out I can tell you Omni Outliner has never been exactly cheap, but I can also tell you it's per, uh, per use cost. That's the phrase I'm looking for. It's insanely low. I have used Omni Outliner pretty much, pretty much every day for a decade since I last bought it. I mean, like I say, I do outline articles sometimes. Um, I have worked out timelines for complex sequences and scripts, uh, planned videos for it, but I've also planned over a thousand uh, events, workshops, school visits, all of that in Omni Outliner. Omni Outliner is an ideas gathering, information juggling, brilliant sorting app. And if you haven't got it, I hope you will try it out. And if you do already have Omni Outliner 5, well, then you're going to like Omni Outliner 6. In fact, actually, just quickly, one example. I've only recently been using Omni for a little while, this beta test version, but already I get to do this. That is a task in my to-do app. Tap on that, tap the link that's there, and I go straight into looking at that 58 key schedule document. But 
I think I, I think I set that up here on my Mac and my office, but I'm not sure, and I don't need to know, because all I know is that on that Mac, on my MacBook Pro, on my iPhone, on either of my two iPads, I have far too much technology, but whichever one I'm on, reach for the nearest screen, tap that, and I'm into the schedule. Forget looking for it, remembering where it's saved, picking up which device, just, I need to read it, I'm reading it. That's through a new feature called Omni Links, and you and I are going to come back to this topic in a future 58 keys, no question. But in the meantime, you need to know the rest of the Christmas list, don't you? Quite right, too. Next, Scrivener. Yeah, for the first time ever talking about Scrivener, I've hesitated a tiny bit about talking to you about it because 58 Keys patron Darren Stokes told me earlier this year that he'd lost a lot of writing in Scrivener. I, mean, I can't remember now whether it was that Scrivener fell over at 100,000 words or might, I think it's more likely 200,000 words but I mean it was this enormous figure. I've, God it was horrible. For a little while it looked like it was all gone and he did get it back. He got the giant 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 majority back fortunately. Still it's got to give you pause. It's got to make you hesitate like it did me there. But but that actually, OK, just the other day, just this week, um, I had to use Microsoft Word again for the first time in ages. And hello, insane formatting changes. Hello, random changes. And hello, being faced constantly with myriad options, yet never the one I actually want. Scrivener by Literature and Latte. It's for writing uh, long form pieces like novels or, or collections of stories, actually also screenplays along the way. But these are it has these practical features right let's go with that it has practical features such as you being able to um have side by side chapter three and chapter 19 so that you can compare the entrance and the exit of a character from a story uh it's also really hot on helping you restructure a piece so uh let's say you wrote a prologue but you've now come to your senses you can drag that prologue down to later on in the book or you can keep dragging it down to the bin or you could create a folder for yourself have seemed like a good idea at the time text and drag it into there because scrivener it has your writing right it has your, your manuscript but then separately, yet right alongside it, in the same document, really, Scrivener also has the drafts you want to save, the offcuts of scenes and things. It has your research. You can throw links in there to sources. Throw in whole PDFs, websites, anything. And know that wherever you are, you can open that Scrivener document, carry on writing, and also be able to refer to any of your research. I, mean, I do that across my Macs and iPads, also sometimes uh, my iPhone if I need to check something, and it is actually also possible to get Scrivener for Windows if you, if you really must. There is an issue that when you've finished writing for now, you know, end of a session or you go off a cup of tea, you really need to close the document. Because otherwise, if you forget and you go to a different device and you open it up there, things can go wrong. I mean, not very wrong. You know, not losing thousands of words wrong, but irritating wrong, I've done it again, how do I sort this out? Wrong. Scrivener costs $60. It's uh, not a subscription, it's a straight out $60. And once more, that thing I was, the phrase I used, the per use cost, oh, it's so small. I, c I couldn't conceive of how to calculate it. What I can conceive though, is preferring Ulysses to Scrivener. I can conceive this very well because actually I, I was a Ulysses fan for, a year or more and uh, actually one more 58 keys page on this time Leopold Green he switched from Scrivener to Ulysses and he's absolutely a fan um actually tell you what I'll put a link to the 58 keys video where I ask him about it and he tells me but I think uh, for brevity short version now it's fair to say I'm sure these are the reasons I liked it Ulysses is uh it's one app with it's like it's got one document in it which is divided into what it calls uh sheets they're just there, sheet after sheet, everything you write, everything you want to write. You can write anything in a sheet. A sheet can be any length. I've got to be careful how you pronounce that word. You can group sheets together to make a sheet book. You can have some sheets for research. I've got to stop. I've just abandoned the word now. You can have others for your shopping list, anything. Whether you're on Mac, iPhone or iPad, when you open Ulysses, you get every one of these things. You get all of your writing in one 
place. Um, Ulysses is a subscription app. It costs $40 per year, and that one f uh, annual fee gets you the app on the Mac, the iPhone, and the iPad. Or it is also available in uh, Setup, uh, the bundle that gets you 200 odd full Mac apps for a fee starting at uh, $10 a month. I think Ulysses is an app that you really need to try out to see how it feels. Actually, I think you can say that about any of the apps on this list, or maybe you can say about anything, any writing app. It's not just the features, it's the feel of them. And I did like the feel of Ulysses. I did enjoy writing in Ulysses. And, and that thing of everything with you, everywhere, that was really appealing. You hear the past tense, though. I think the reason I stopped using it ultimately came down to the fact that Ulysses is a Markdown editor. Uh, Markdown, if you don't happen to already be a, an obsessive fan of it, it is this a, a quick way of um, formatting documents, uh, how to make bold, italic, you know, things like that, a bit more complicated than that, but a quick way of specifying those things in such a way that you just drop them down, but then they're, they're converted into HTML for going onto the web. Markdown is great if you don't already know HTML, but it does also sometimes get in the way. And as it happens, it gets in the way with things I write. I mean, the, the big key example is, you know, when you quote someone and you have to put in an explanatory word in the middle of their sentence, so you put it in square brackets. Yeah, no, square brackets mean something in Markdown, so they mean something in Ulysses. And that kind of was a push away from it. Really, though, I think the reason I happened to leave Ulysses was that I went on to the next suggested Christmas writing app. Hang on, I'm making this sound like a journey through all of them. I'm recommending all of them. Let's be clear about that. But this next one, this next one is Drafts 5. Uh, Drafts 5, it, it used to be this little like note-taking app on the iPhone, and its biggest feature back in the day, I mean, a really excellent biggest feature, was just you'd pick up your phone and you would write. There was no opening a new document, no saving and closing the last one. There was just nothing in your way. Thought of it, pick up the phone, right, get on with it and put the phone down. And if you did that, if you wrote something and put the phone down and then you thought of something else, you come back to write, where you pick up the phone, you just start writing whatever that thing is. The original writing was already filed away and waiting for you there was a blank screen, a little cursor throbbing away. Bring it on, it was saying. It was quick. It was handy. Um, there were also always drafts actions, a little extras that meant you could choose what to do with your text once you'd written it. So you could write the text and think, yeah, I need to message somebody with that. Send it off as a message. Email it to someone. All within apps. Uh, send it straight into your blog. Take it live on your blog. And actually, just for me, above all else, writing a draft on the iPhone was enjoyable. Can't quantify that. Just if I, I just I enjoyed writing in drafts on the iPhone. And then it came out for the Mac and the iPad, and I was pre-sold. I was hooked. Um, so far this year, I've written, I'm, I'm crossing over 750,000 words, but I would bet at least half of those are in drafts five. Drafts five is a subscription app that costs, well, uh, here in the UK, I pay a whole 17 pounds, 49 pence a year. I believe it's uh, $20 in the States. That fee gets it across all devices. Actually, I didn't mention this. iPhone, Mac, iPad, and Apple Watch. Actually, hang on. I said Omni Outliner 5 was great, but Omni Outliner 6 is coming, and that's even better. I said Scrivener's great, but it yeah, didn't have that issue with very large documents. I said Ulysses was great, but I have moved away from it. There's no qualification here. All I've got to say about Drafts 5 is, yep, yep, off you pop. Go get that. But maybe that's some sort of global karmic balancing going on. Because the last one I really do want to recommend to you does also come with footnotes and asterisks more than any of the rest. It's Final Draft, the screenwriting app. Let me get the asterisks out of the way first, because it is true they tend to be that type of asterisk that cover up swearing. If Final Draft goes wrong on you, it's not pretty. And Final Draft, the company, while well, the company maintains that this is the industry standard for scripts and screenplays, and I think it probably still is. I think that's changing, but right now it still is. But the thing is, the company kind of demonstrates the attitude that you would expect from the industry standard of anything. 
one example, I mean, this is unfair because it's such a long time ago now, but I was once at an event and I was talking to the final draft support expert who was there for some reason. And I mentioned a really bad bug in final drafts, iPad version that he knew all about it. He remarked on, yeah, it's funny that was weird, isn't it? Didn't seem to have the slightest concern about, you know, fixing it. But then, on the other hand, I do have a friend who writes all of his scripts solely in Final Draft and actually solely in Final Draft on the iPad. He doesn't use the Mac or the PC version. Um, actually, I've just written a lot in the iPad too, and I do like it. I prefer it on the Mac. I, I like it a lot on the Mac. Uh, that sounds weird because uh, to me, in my ears anyway, because I'm also very critical of Final Draft on the Mac. But I was critical before because it took a very long time for it to stop looking like a kind of sullen, resentful Windows app slumming it over here on the Mac. And also because its last paid major upgrade was a bit of a shrug and so was the one before. But when I am writing screenplays in Final Draft, I can get lost in my script and its world and actually barely register that this is the app I'm using. There are alternatives I should recommend, and one particularly good one you should look into is called Highland 2. But at its core, Final Draft is excellent. I think that might actually that might be the issue that the core, the core features haven't changed in decades, and they can't. They do the job. And but it's just there's only so often since that you can add an outlining feature or something without buyers wondering, what did I just upgrade to this? Final Draft for the Mac is a one-time purchase that officially costs $250, but I doubt they've charged that above a day in its entire product lifecycle. Final Draft 13, the current version, is always on sale somewhere. In fact, actually, as I record this, the Final Draft company itself is offering it for 20% off. I mean, and I've seen a lot better than that. So that is five writing apps for Christmas, and I promised you five. Would I lie to you? But I'm a writer, you are a writer, we're not bound by numbers. So what those, those actually are, the five main ones. I'd like please to just tell you about three more quick things that you could like for yourself, or actually, for that very wise and quite wonderful, also terribly attractive person watching this beside you. Hello? Um, um, first, setup. I did actually just mention this, that's what put it back in my mind. Um, I must use a dozen Mac apps or so from setup all the time, which makes for me the $14.99 a month uh, subscription I pay for a bargain. Something like 200, more than 200 Mac apps and a few related iPhone or iPad app ones for a single fee that starts at $10 a month. I pay more to get it on more machines. Yeah. Um, next, you and I do spend a lot of time at our desks writing. So think about having some company with Apple Music, an Apple Music subscription. And since we also need, we need to step away from these desks sometimes, how about you also take a look at an Apple Books gift card? You could, for the music, you could equally go for Spotify instead of Apple Music, but the cost's about the same, and Apple Music seems to be the much better service to me. Oh, sure, it's free if someone else is paying for you. There you go. Um, I just, I'm not keen on Spotify, the company or what it does, so yeah. Uh, you could equally go, instead of Apple Books, you get an Amazon Kindle gift card. I prefer the, the typography, the look of the text on Apple Books, but no question, Amazon Kindle has a lot more titles. There's also Kobo. Right, suddenly I see a rabbit hole looming. Let's do this instead. Let's say that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Is it too early to say Happy Christmas? Yes, probably. Merry holidays. Take care of yourself. Write more. And I'll see you soon.